Hey guys, um, you're probably wondering what you're watching, uh, what you're looking at, sorry I should say. Um, I just wanted to do a wee video this afternoon, try and get one out at a normal time, um, rather than like midnight and stuff once I've got the kids to bed. And I just wanted you to kind of see a little pathway. I, I was thinking about doing this but going through my transaction history, but that's just really messy and, you know, I think uh, people, if you're watching a YouTube video, you want to see pictures, you want to see actual live, you know, stuff. So, what you see here, I've basically had... I've got two friends that I send, you know, I have in the past sent screenshots of my portfolio to. One of them introduced me to Football Index, doesn't play it anymore. And uh, another one is just, uh, just a really close friend. He's in the financial kind of world and understands these things pretty well. So he's just good for advice and uh, he's a big football fan as well. So be kind of, you know, he's, he's quite valuable to me. But I uh, basically had a bunch of pictures just showing this portfolio starting from like one holding, moving all the way up to where it is and out. And, I didn't want to bore you, we're going through, you know, we've bought five Cancelo, we've bought five Lopez, we've bought two Mbappe, da da da. So I've just took you right to this page here. So uh, what inspired me for this, guys, is I was chatting to somebody in the comment section uh, yesterday, the day before, and he was talking about how he's got a £45 portfolio, and it just really took me back to those early stages when you're just getting your first couple of deposits in and a lot of positions you're looking at and how to turn them around. So um, what I used to do, and if you look at this quite clearly, you know, um, I would make, I would think to myself, kind of like I did, you know, in one of the last couple of videos, but, you know, like I've got, say, £10 in my account, I'm thinking about putting £10 on this game here, goal score or whatever. No, I'm not going to do that. I'll put £10 in my portfolio and I'll buy five Diaz. Boom, go and do that. A couple of days, next week later, right, okay, I've got a spare couple of quid. I'm going to, oh, I'll put a bet on. And then, you, you know, that be feeling when you know you're just betting for the sake of betting. Yeah, when I got that feeling, I would just go, right, sack it, I'm not doing it. I'll put 20 quid in and I'll buy two Mbappe or, you know, so on and so forth. And that's how I kind of get to this position here. And as you can see, most of the holdings are in a decent position, you know. I don't think Mbappe did us any favours like, in terms of bonuses or buzz or anything. Like Ronaldo did, I can remember that much. Ronnie and Cancelo are uh, very good. Diaz is very, you know, again, I'm sure maybe took the picture of the day before this, but... Um, when I screenshotted it, you can see the text I sent to my pal the day before I put him up for sale. He was like down at one pound fifty, and I said I'm just going to sell him tomorrow. I'm just done with him. The next day, he got linked back in with Real Madrid from Leon, and he just shot up like you see here. So you just never know when media things are going to take place and really move the portfolio. So we go from this to this, which is a bit of a drop. I had to withdraw the money, guys. I was just skint. Um, and I didn't want to withdraw everything. I left a couple of quid in there, my loose change. You know, if you look there, my balance was like £99 once you sell them all and um, take the commission away or whatever. I'd have just been left with that. I'd have withdrawn £90 and I've just thought I'll buy one of him and three of him and just see what happens, you know. Um, and then, you know, we put a bet on. <laughs> we do a rolling accumulator, which I used to really like in play betting, rolling, you know, from one game to another, goal scorers, goal intervals, that type of thing. And as I like bugger it, I'm putting this money in my index and that's going to kickstart me. So you can take that with a pinch of salt or take it as you like. But yeah, so I went on heavy on Ronaldo and you can see there it paid off you know, quite easily. That was the, the end of August. This picture here, if you look at the top of the screen, and then this is like mid-October. Um, so there's a big period there where we've not done anything. You know, we've just had no money in it and uh, just had to dither away and flip about five pounds six pound didn't really go anywhere i think eventually i had like one ronaldo or something and we then do well on ronaldo we sell him off and we go into Mba eh, pardon me obama yang in time for the europa league and he went on i think i had him for about two weeks or something he scored some goals and he really shot up in price which you'll see in the next page here he is shot up to 521 he's netted some dividends i've used those dividends to go and buy jacob brown larson um i think I so yeah i've sold some as well um and then Jacob Brun Larson at that point was an IPO. He was just introduced to the market and he really took a bit of a dip. I bought him because, as I've shown you before, you know, he started the season really hot and I thought he could be a sneaky wee one. Didn't quite work out for us. We then go from that to this. We went back in on Ronnie and then we went and picked up some Raheem Sterling. Um, and you can see the portfolio is kind of staggering about the same kind of level, early 400s. Um, and then we take a nice little shoot up with Sterling. And then we get another IPO, Miguel Almiron. I was absolutely certain this guy was going to be moving to Arsenal in January. Arsenal were linked with him before Atlanta bought him. And he's been the best player in MLS in terms of creative midfielders anyway. Um, and he took an initial rise. We ended up losing some money on him um, because it, it then transpired. He came out and he said, I'll definitely be here for the start of next season. And then the links became more like Newcastle rather than Arsenal. So it just became less appealing for, for people, you know, and they've kind of dropped out of him. Oh, sugar. 
Um, we then move on Sterling, he's done his job, he's got dividends for us, scored us some goals. And um, <clears throat> we then went into uh, Dries Mertens, you know, for goal bonuses and that type of thing as well. And Dries Mertens worked out pretty well, we went and made another deposit, I believe. Um, we've made a withdrawal at some point as well, guys. You know, again, I've just needed money and, and pulled it out. Yeah, so I've sold Sterling, we've made money on him, I've withdrawn a bunch. And then, you know, we went back in on Mertens. And then we've made another little deposit and we've got De Bruyne in. And that's when I thought he was going to be coming back from injury. It didn't quite work out like that. We then sold a bunch of stuff off, made another deposit. Um, this money here was just, I think, oh, off the withdrawal I made back here. I was kind of keeping that money in the, in the back burner in case I needed that again. And I've saved up some more money. And then when my wages have came in or whatever, I've then topped it back up. Um, and we've got our 100 Sani. Uh, Dries Mertens, as you can see, he's doing really well there. He's netted some bonuses by this point. But then he goes and Napoli get knocked out of the Champions League by Liverpool and he just dropped all the way down to the sort of price you see him sitting at today. We then go from that to this. Sani's doing really well. We're picking up deniers. We've done a good turn on Mata when Jose gets sacked. And uh, Vincent Company, they didn't, yeah, I think we've maybe got them to 99 pence before we sold them. And then there you see Sani moving away. <laughs> A nice bit of profit, and then from there we make a withdrawal and we start with the the portfolio that you guys now see. So I wanted to show you this guy's really um, as much as anything to show you that it's important to have positions that do well and make money, right? But what really stimulates your portfolio and really keeps it going is small regular deposits, and then equally, like you can see in my cost and my price section at the top here. <laughs> It's making withdrawals when you make money, you know, when you close a position that does really well, like, if you look at Sterling, we've finished £30 up, and then I've obviously sold him and thought, I'm going to take £100 out of that, or whatever it works out to be, and you need to, as much as you want to make regular deposits, if you need money, as soon as a position, you know, like Sterling, you know, a holding you've got, sits well, um, you want to be selling that, you know, and moving on uh, to the next one, and uh, pulling some money out, put it in your back pocket, use that profit, roll it over, and make that work for you rather than your own money that's the position you ideally want to get to is a position where you've got more money that you've earned in this sloshing about rather than money you've deposited but you need to deposit money to generate money money makes money basically guys so as i say i just want to take these back um and you know as i say this channel guys the main thing i'm kind of aiming this at is people like me and people like you if you're watching this you've not got thousands of pounds if you're watching the guys on twitter that play this They've got hundred thousand pound portfolios, or oh, I just broke ten thousand pound barrier on dividends and all that type of stuff, and it's amazing if you've got that level of money. But the fact is, is most people don't. You need to start somewhere, and you need to play within your own, within your own margins, within your own means, and making the most of people. And as you can see, this is the kind of strategies I would run when it's a, a small portfolio, one or two holdings at the most. And when you're kind of between positions, you don't want to miss out on somebody. You maybe move it up. Like I've got the now to maybe three or four. And then you see who pans out and who doesn't. And you make your moves off the back of that. Okay. Um, but as you can see, every time, guys, when I am selling and moving on, I've either hit a deadline that I've set, you know, in terms of time I'm going to hold this person until roughly this date or until this match or until they ra raise in price to this point, And then I'll move them on. Okay, so uh, thanks for watching guys, um, just a quick one today, have a great day, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff guys, and I'll see you on the next one, take care, bye bye.